Okay, so right now the question reads, how much do magazines influence parental involvement? Um, okay, what do you think of that question? Do you think it, I think it still might need to be a little bit more specific in terms of what kinds of magazines you're talking about. Okay. But I like I like the connection between kind of the direction that you were headed with the magazines and the direction you're headed with parental involvement. It looks like that, that will definitely bring the two concepts together, which I think is really important. Okay, great. All right. And um, so any in any uh, that the, any suggestions or thoughts on whether um, about the method, if it would, should be both or qualitative or quantitative, or what would you think would be the best method? Uh, I guess maybe should we work on the should the question um, be tweaked? Should I kind of work on the question more or? I would I would probably work on a question a little bit. It's like I said, in the sense of, so are you looking specifically at current advice magazines or child rearing magazines? What kind of magazines are you thinking about? Yes, um, mainly, yeah, perhaps I'm thinking of like, um, I guess child rearing magazines, um, parenting magazines, specifically the major magazine parents since that's the 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 biggest um you know that's like the vogue of parenting magazines um but you know then you know there are others but i know that's the the kind of the one i had in mind because that's what everyone thinks of when they think of parenting magazines Okay. So when you say <clears throat> how do magazines influence parental involvement, how are you defining parental involvement? Okay. And are you thinking about a specific age group, grade level? Hmm. And, and I would suggest that you probably do because I, I don't think you want to look at the entire scope of K through 12, every single age group. That will be that will be too much. <laughs> oh. Several books worth probably of research. So I would. I would think more a little bit about focus and the direction that you're going to have with that. Okay, all right. Hmm. Now, I'm wondering about that because I know um, one, the, an issue about parenting magazines that, um, you know, that, that I've noticed or the trend with them is to focus more on early childhood. Um, right in the elementary level and then they sort of um you know wane off when it comes to middle and high school and, and definitely college um and i know that that's what's attractive to uh school districts school districts um you know find it valuable to have a document that all of their schools can utilize um and parents would just sort of be something that would be attractive to um, elementary uh, schools or early childhood um, development centers and then it's it really doesn't have much um, academic content um, and that's something too that I really want to maybe look at the difference in the academic content of the publications um, to you know I'm, I'm not sure that's kind of really where I'm, I'm thinking of when I'm thinking of comparing them and, and the um, influence on parental involvement because of the lack of um, academic content in one, I don't know if it would if school systems would find it valuable. I know myself as a parent, that's what frustrated me. I didn't really find much value um, academically in them, and that's sort of why you know I'm kind of uh, thought that another. Um, uh, piece was necessary to kind of fill that gap that existed. Um, so, I, so, I don't know. So, when you say that, I'm curious about something. Uh -oh. So, who is your participant in your study going to be? Is it going to be a magazine? Or is it going to be the parents? Or is it going to be people in the school district? 
teachers, superintendents, principals? Um, wow, now that's a great question. Because initially I was, I, you know, I was thinking parents. I'm, but I think that's kind of where I need a little guidance too. I'm wondering about um, that. I, I, I like that question because I hadn't, I hadn't thought about an audience outside of parents. But what about an audience of, of you know, school districts or, you know, I don't know about super, you know, superintendents or school districts or those kind of folks. I think that would be a great audience um, for this. Um, I don't, I, no, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't I, know. I can see it going a couple ways. Okay. I can see you, you maybe could do, if you were focusing your attention on one school, for example, mm. it's just me thinking off the top of my head, if you could get one of the boys of parenting magazines to share copies of their magazines with parents. Okay. That's how I was thinking originally. And maybe, maybe you do a kind of experiment in some ways where based on reading or reviewing these magazines for a certain period of time. Okay. Where did parents start in terms of their involvement and where did they end up in terms of their involvement? Does it change over time? Okay. Because if you're using parents as your study group, you're assuming that you've got a group out there that actually reads the magazine. Mm-hmm. And what happens if you go into school and nobody, nobody does? Okay. Um, so I want you to think a little bit more about who, who's your study subject? Mm-hmm. Who are you going to be either interviewing or surveying or doing focus groups with? Okay. Because I think that's going to change the nature of your study. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And then that, I think, will eventually lead you to method. Once you figured out who the participant is in the study, who you're studying and refine your question based on that, that's going to tell you what your method's going to be because it, it, it could be different. You could do a focus group or a series of focus groups. That's one kind of research. You could be doing a questionnaire be a different kind of research. It's going to change how you decide to actually do the method depending on how your question lands, lands up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right. I see. I see. Now I know at one point I thought about um, uh, and an an early childhood um, uh, center that um, I'd kind of become close with the director of, and maybe. Um, I was kind of thinking of maybe using her parents as a focus group, um, but then again, there's a high school that I could use um, that you know I'm really close with the administrator of. I could you know use that. Um, I I don't know. I know initially I was thinking about that early childhood um, piece. Uh, yeah, so I'm, uh, wow, I'm wondering about, you know, whether I should rethink that or not, or whether that would be a good direction to go to, to move toward. I, I was, I was going to think about, I, I suspect that the early childhood is probably going to be the better, location. Okay. Because <clears throat> it sounds like parenting magazines are geared a little bit more towards that audience. Yeah. And they might be more likely to read the magazine. Mm-hmm. And then on the other end, that's I think true. the big question is going to be, okay, so so if you're a read the magazine, mm-hmm. what kind of involvement would you expect to see as a result of it? Would mm-hmm. it be better communication with the teachers? Would it be better help with the homework? What does that involvement look like? And I think that's something to think about for your question, too. Mm. Okay. All right, all right. Um, okay. Yeah, that's true. And that's, that's a question I have too. What do I, how do I measure it? That, that, that kind of component of the question, you know, how, 
whether it's you know more help with homework or you know more communication with the teacher or just more help at home you know um, stronger efficacy I, I don't know I'm not really sure um, I would like to you know if I had my druthers I don't know if there's if it's possible to even focus on efficacy but um, what what do you think about that possibility though of I think you could I, I think you know, the question is going to be how are you going to measure that are you yeah. going to measure it by hours spent mm. like something <laughs> oh yeah yeah um, that's true number of contacts Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there's a correlation between the number of hours parents spend with their students and grades that the students get? Mm -hmm. Like I'm, yeah, like a home learning environment, whether that right. exists or pre and post, or if it did, right. if it was changed at all. Uh -huh. um, you know. You know, just there. And then, and then how do you measure that? Then is it going to be self-reported okay. on the part of the parents? <laughs> mm -hmm. Or is there some sort of observation that you'll do? Will you enlist the teachers to help? Mm. What might that actually look like as you're doing the research? Oh, yeah. Well, do you think that one might be a little hard to document? Or possibly. Okay. Um, but, but not impossible. But I think that pushes it more towards the next method or qualitative. Mm. Okay. Wow. Because in qualitative, you're measuring, you're you're documenting the experience that people have, so you're measuring their experience. Okay. And you do enough of the research that you can train, right? meaning that you've got enough people saying the same thing that you have a reasonable belief that it's true. Mm. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Hmm. Okay. Man, and I'm wondering, what do you, that feel this, it, it's kind of, I mean, it, just going in so many directions, I, I'm, the hardest